Hi guys, welcome back to another video. So a few people asked me to do a room tour, so I thought I would kill two birds with one stone and give you guys a room tour slash what the accommodation is like at Disneyland Paris as a cast member, so I hope you guys enjoy. So there are a few things that I need to talk about to start with, just to get the basics out of the way and then we can go into detail about all the accommodation later on in the video. So, as I said in my top tips video, there are two types of contracts as a character and parade performer at Disneyland Paris. You have a CDI and a CDD. So a CDI is a contract that is like open-ended and doesn't have an end date, and a CDD is a contract date to date. And your apartment is very different, depends on what contract you have, which is why I needed to explain that. So, I'm gonna start with the CDD accommodation because that's super easy to talk about and I can get that out of the way. So there are two types of accommodation for a CDD. There are, now I might not pronounce these names right, but there are Brasserie and Playads. Now I personally stayed at Brasserie so I can show you videos of the rooms and tell you about my experience there, but I didn't stay at Playads so I can't really tell you much about that. From what people said, they said the rooms were fine and they were absolutely livable, but they weren't as nice as Brasserie, so depending on where you are, like it's absolutely fine and some people might really prefer play ads, but I think the rooms were just a little bit nicer in Brasserie. I know they were planning to refurb the whole like accommodation, I don't know if that's still happening or what, but who knows, the accommodation is still nice, Disney aren't going to put you in like horrible homes to stay in for your contract, so don't worry, both accommodations are fine. So, 9 times out of 10, if you are in Brasserie as a CDD, you will probably get your own room, but it's not always guaranteed, obviously it depends on how many CDDs they have and how many single rooms they have available, but you will probably get put in a single room, and the single rooms are really really nice, and they are as big as you need, you don't need any bigger really for your contract, and I know some of them had a balcony, which is really cool, mine didn't, but who doesn't love an extra balcony? The only thing about Brasserie is you can't have guests stay over and I'm sure it's the same at Play Ads and this was like a big problem for me. I wanted people to be able to stay over when they came to visit me. So unfortunately Brasserie doesn't allow that. You can have guests stay up until 2am? I think it was, it was either 12 or 2 and then they had to leave so that was kind of the downside. So I will show you guys the videos that I took of those rooms. I just took them on my phone to send to my family so they're not very good and I don't sort of like show you all the details but just so you guys have like a basic understanding on what the rooms look like. So yeah, I'll pop the video up here. So when you went into my room you had a bathroom that obviously had a shower, a toilet and a sink and then you had a little walkway with some shelves and a wardrobe to put your clothes in and then I had a single bed with two drawers underneath, a table and two chairs and a kitchenette that had a fridge freezer, two hobs and a few cupboards which was absolutely fine. Brasserie provided everything in terms of like plates, pans, cutlery, cups, everything like that. They also provided a pillow and a quilt and they also provide the um, like duvet covers and stuff if you want to but you can have your own like that's not a problem at all. Yeah the room was really nice, I had a nice window and yeah I really liked my single room, it was what I needed and the rent is so so cheap so Brasserie's rent was 365 at the time, obviously it can change every year but that I think that was about the price that I had and they also gave you Wi-Fi and you didn't have to pay for that. No, you didn't. They provided you with Wi-Fi and every six months you had to get a new password, um, which is good. Like, it's so, so cheap. And honestly, if I could stay at Brasserie and have guests stay over, I would stay there forever. The rent's cheap, the rooms are nice, you get free Wi-Fi. They're honestly really nice. So where the accommodation is, you have about a 15 minute bus journey to Disney and there's a supermarket like two stops away, which is really nice. And they have pharmacy and stuff if you need to go there. You can also catch the bus the opposite way to like Valdi if you guys wanna go to like the main shopping center there. Yeah, it was in like a really nice little location. You could walk to work if you wanted to as well. I think the walk was about half an hour, I think. Google Maps it guys, don't take my word on that. But yeah, that is what a single room looks like at Brasserie for your CDD or 
potentially CDI, which I will talk about now. I'm sorry if the lighting is changing. I think it's going dark, but we're going to roll with it. So now I'm going to talk about CDI accommodation and this can go off in a few different directions, but bear with me. I want to talk about this in as much detail as possible so you guys understand it because it was really, really hard for me when I first came. So if this video is a little bit lengthy, I'm really sorry, but I want to tell you guys as much information as possible. So when you first arrive, they will put you into temporary accommodation. Now for me, that was at Brodery. I don't know if sometimes they put people in play ads. So I went into a double room, which is absolutely fine. The only problem was they didn't put me with someone in my department. I shared a room with someone from hotel and they worked completely different shifts to me. So I would be getting up first thing in the morning and they would be coming in last thing at night and we just constantly would wake each other up and have to get ready in the dark and go to bed with the light on and it just didn't work very well so yeah just be warned about that because I did not know and that was a shock I haven't shared a room with someone in a very long time so when you first went into the double rooms you had like a nice big floor space and you had your two beds that had two drawers underneath as well and you had your little dining area and the kitchen was sort of like a lot bigger you had more of a worktop and you had your fridge freezer and a microwave oven yes i didn't say that in the about the single rooms but you will get a microwave oven never figured out how to use it as the oven but it was fine for me yes forgot to say that i'm so so sorry you have a microwave oven and then our bathroom was like a wet room we had a toilet and the shower was like like a disabled shower it had a seat and it had like a little like squeegee to like move the water away when you'd had your shower. The only thing was the floor was wet for like hours. So when you wanted to go and brush your teeth, if you had socks on, yeah, they were wet. And I used to do that a lot because I'd forget. So the only downside to that was the bathroom, but it was fine. I really liked the room. It was big. I actually moved into my single room because there was mold in my room. So I said to the lady, look, there's mold in my room. I can you put me in another room? And it just so happened my roommate was also leaving at the time and I was like, you know, do you have any single rooms? You know, I may as well ask if you don't ask, you don't get. And she was like, yeah, we can put you in a single room and they did. And it was the same rent, so I wasn't gonna complain. So yeah, if you are in a double room, you will still pay 365, I'm sure it was, euros a month for that. And again, obviously you have the same Wi-Fi rules and everything. So yeah, that is what the temporary accommodation looks like. And then they will house you into more permanent accommodation now. Bear with me here, guys. How do I tell this as simply as possible? So you have three different types of accommodations. You have resitaps, resitapes, not sure how we're pronouncing the first one. LJT and Alfie. They were the three like main accommodations you could sort of like go with after being in your temporary accommodation. So Resi had three different accommodations within their like website. They had one in Chessy, one in Ceres and one in Montrevan. And the prices ranged from about 550 to 600 euros I think. Um, so those rooms were a little bit more expensive but you had like three quarter size beds and the rooms were nice, they were livable. I don't have any videos to show you guys because I didn't live there, so I'm really sorry, but the rooms were really nice, they were livable, they were just quite expensive and that's why I didn't go there. So originally I got put into ALJT, which is the room I've just moved out of, and this was the cheapest option, they said anyway. So the accommodation was 450 euros a month, and they provided a pillow and a fridge freezer and that was it. So you had to sort of like get everything else yourself. They provided you with like a throw, but that stayed in the cupboard and never came out. So I went and got my own duvet and then I had to get all like my pots and pans. And the accommodation is in like a really nice place with like the shopping center. It's in Montrefan, which is like a 10 minute walk to Val Europe, which is our main shopping center. So I could buy all my things from there and it was no problem at all. I moved out of here for two reasons. The first one was you weren't allowed guests to stay. People did sneak people in and you can sneak people in easily, but the rules were you didn't have anyone to stay and I don't really like to break rules. So I was like, no, that's not for me. I need somewhere that Joe can come and stay and my family and friends when they wanna come stay as well. Um, and the other reason was because it felt very clinical and I tried to make it as homely as possible, but I just 
didn't like the feel and if it's going to be somewhere that I live for the next two years I wanted it to feel like a cute little apartment and it didn't so I tried to move out. So before I show you the video I just want to say my room is not an accurate representation of what the rooms look like. I was so so lucky with the room that I got. It was meant to be I think 19 square meters and I had a large bathroom and it was a disabled bathroom and it was completely fine. I loved the bathroom, it was a huge mirror which you will see in the video but not everyone was blessed with a room like I had. The thing with ALJT was the bathroom so everyone would say and they were not wrong, I have seen pictures, you stand in your shower and if you want, if you drop something on the floor you have to like slide down the shower because there's no room. Like if you bend over in your shower your head's in the toilet and I, I can't like, it's tiny, it's like smaller than a cabin on a cruise ship, like those kind of bathrooms. It's so so small and I was honestly so so blessed to have a big bathroom but don't think that every room is like my room because it's not and you might get lucky and have a room like me but you'll probably have one of the small bathrooms so yeah just bear that in mind if you guys maybe are claustrophobic that shower room is not the one. So this is what you get when you first come on. You have a little walkway and uh, some drawers. Sorry about my cleaning things. Um, and you have like a double slidey door and uh, a shelf. And then under here you have your railing so you can hang things up. And then the bathroom, like I just explained, obviously is very, very big and has a lovely big mirror and two sinks. Um, but it is a wet room because um, it is a disabled bathroom so yeah this is what that looks like and then in here you have um, like enough definitely enough storage um, like you've got drawers and cupboards and all sorts um, and a fridge freezer and drawers over here and well shelves over here and then two big drawers and then you get given three different size tables as well um but they only supply you with like the room and like the the fridge and the bin and stuff like that but all the other things you have to provide yourself but yeah this is what my room looks like so on to my final accommodation which is the one i have just moved into so this is called alfie now they have three different accommodations they have two in butty st george and one is quite new and it's quite modern. This isn't the one I'm staying at, but I know they have one that is the more modern version. And they have one in, I'm not even gonna pronounce it, so this is where it is. And most people will stay at this kind of one and it's a 10, 15 minute bus, I believe, to work. And there's like several different buses that you can get if you wanna get your bus to work and stuff. Yeah, but onto the room that I have. So I currently pay, 580 euros a month which is a big leap up from what i was paying at aljt but with this room i get guests to stay over like at the night they have to pay 10 euros a night which is absolutely fine it's much cheaper than a hotel and as long as i can have people stay then i'm happy and it's probably double the size of my old room so i really can't complain and i'm really really happy that i moved here so i will give you guys a room tour and then explain a little bit in detail about everything else so yeah so this is what my room looks like when you first go in you have a table and chairs that can like extend and fold down if you want to keep it small and then to the left is my wardrobe and I was concerned at how like small this looked but it fits a majority of my clothes in which is fine and I have a large pile of shoes at the bottom what else do I have so I have my single bed here with two drawers underneath and then they gave me a bedside table with a drawer some shelves here and some shelves above my bed as well they also gave me this shelving unit which has two shelves under in the like cupboard bit so I can lock things away if I need to when I go to work which is really nice. I have a lovely double window here and some more storage but there's a lot of junk in there so we're just going to ignore that. This is what the standard kitchenette looks like in the accommodations at Disney so you've got your two hobs, your fridge freezer, a cupboard usually underneath the sink and a cupboard above your head to fit all your things in that you need and I also have another double window here which is really nice and then into the bathroom I have a standard shower just a normal shower really and this shower curtain they provided 
and it was like in the packet, never been used, which was really nice. They also obviously have a toilet and a sink and they provided the mop and the bucket as well. So yeah, this is what my room looks like and I pay 580 euros a month for this. So this accommodation will provide you with a fridge freezer, a duvet and a pillow, which is fine. I already had obviously everything from my last accommodation. And yeah, I'm really happy with it because I had all my extra stuff, like my pots, pans, plates, everything. I was quite happy that I had to get all that myself because then I wasn't wasting money. My plan was to get like a, I think these accommodations start from 425 and they range to 580 and I was planning on going with the cheaper one not gonna lie but she said it wasn't available until the end of September and I just wanted to move out as soon as possible and I just wasn't happy so I was like you know what I'm gonna pay it I thought I'm gonna treat myself and have a nice big room so I did and I can't complain I'm really really happy and the location is lovely so it is two stops from Disney and it's literally a six minute train journey to work and it's also one stop up from Bali Europe so I can just nip on the train and go shopping there if I want to as well which is really really nice and there is a bar just around the corner that everyone seems to go to so can't complain about that. And yeah that is what my room is like so the final thing I wanted to talk about is calf. Now this is I don't really know how to explain it. Basically, you can apply for this thing, which is called CAF, and they can give you help towards your rent. So I had that at ALJT, and I'm just in the process of reapplying for the accommodation here, and they gave me 380 euros a month for my accommodation at ALJT. So I actually only had to pay 70 euros a month for my rent, which was incredible. They did only just start giving me that much money in March, so I don't know if it was because of the lockdown and being on furlough that gave me that much money. I'm not 100% sure, but that's the money that they gave me. So they will give you, depending on like your salary and your rent, they give you money to help you pay your rent and they will give it directly to your landlady and stuff. So you don't actually see the money, which is fine. They also give you something called Prime Active, something more French than that. And this basically goes off your wages quarterly. So they work it up and they will give you an allowance every month just on top of your wage to sort of like help you get by. So I have been currently getting 98 euros a month, which is really nice. Like that can cover my Navigo to work, which is like my train pass. Um, so yeah, it really helps and it can change obviously depending if you get higher or lower wage and whatnot. But yeah, that really makes a difference. So don't stress about half of your wage going on your rent because you can get help for it if you are in the Disney accommodations. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys have a better understanding about the accommodation at Disneyland Paris. I know it can be a little bit confusing, but hopefully you guys don't go in there blind like I did because not gonna lie, it's pretty scary. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys enjoyed looking at the different rooms that I've been in because I've been in four rooms in the past year. So yeah, if you have any questions, then just leave them in the comment section below or send me a DM and I will try and answer them all as best as honestly as I can. I'm gonna try and vlog more. I'm gonna throw it out there so that I have motivation to do it, but I've just been really busy since coming back to work and I'm gonna try and vlog at least once a month, if not more, if I have time. But yeah, definitely keep an eye out on my channel for the vlogs that are gonna come. And of course, if you guys did enjoy this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and thank you all so much for watching.